What is happening? Welcome to another pitcher video breakdown. My name is Nick Pollock, someone who has been following pitchers forever and writes about them every single day at pitcherlist.com. I rank the top 100 signing pitchers every single Monday and do a review of every single pitcher every single night. And tonight, well, today, I want to talk about Randy Vasquez. Who is this guy for the Yankees? He had a fantastic start yesterday, got the win against the White Sox, and I want to show you how he gets it done. Okay, so we're going to watch, I don't know, probably an inning, two, three. It's pretty easy to do, and you'll see why quickly. So he throws fastballs, and he's going to throw a lot of them. And that's 95. That's Those are really good located fastballs, right? He's attacking right away, right at the top of the zone. Just missed the first one. That's very up and in. I love seeing up and in, jamming same-handed batters. Uh, kind of just pounding and pounding and pounding it. And there's there's a slider that's kind of a sweeper, has a big like frisbee movement to it. It's not really a big whiff pitch. It's a change of speed. It's at 82 versus 95, 96. And you can see he's pounding the zone as much as he can. But you see, good fastballs at 96 up here, ones that have a lot of induced vertical break, are going to get the whiff, I think, at 1-2 here. And the fact that Frazier, while well, getting that 95-96 was able to foul off an 82 mile per hour pitch kind of is like, okay. And then he's able to come back at 96 and foul off again. It's the batter is telling you that this is not a guy who's going to blow you away. And was able to hold up on that one. And there's something to be said about having different velocity bands. Um, this is a theory that I have. So I'm going to watch, we're going to watch this one more time. A theory that I have, about different velocity bands, you see 96 to 82, is there's a specific there's a specific band that's good and there's one that's bad, and it's kind of like a bell curve. If they're too close to each other, a small adjustment will allow guys to, to slow down or speed up to be able to hit something. Let's say you throw like a 93 mile per hour slider and then or a cutter and then 96 on the fastball or so. Because it's very close, you're able to make a you know, the timing can be adjusted quickly. If it's about 8 to 10, it's too much of a difference for you to slow down completely and shut down. But if it's long, and let's say you get, like this one, it's like a 14 mile per hour difference. With this one, um, he's out in front, but then he's able to stop and then recalibrate, right? And it's long enough. Imagine like, you, you can tell at one point, like, let's say you're speeding up for 95 and then someone throws it really slow. You would kind of stop and reset, right? You can understand that. So at some point, if it's too slow, you're giving the batter enough time to recalibrate. If it's too fast, it's not really enough of a difference so that maybe they were a little bit behind the fast one. Now they're good, well-timed for that 92-mile-per-hour cutter. That's like three ticks lower. But if it's right at like eight or 10, that's kind of the sweet spot of not being close enough to be able to quickly recalibrate and not being long enough for guys to readjust. That's my theory on it. If you have these giant ones, you don't have anything in the middle. And seeing 82 from Vasquez and then 95, 96, I do wonder if that is, that's kind of why you don't get those kinds of chases on it. Even this one, you can see that he was able to check swing. Looking at this one more time. He was able so to, to give enough run. time to hold back, so right? As opposed to that's at 86, 87, he might feel like he needs to still be more aggressive on it and would still go through on the swing, right? That's my theory. It could be really stupid. <laughs> and that's an easy take there. And you can see he just doesn't have that put away offering. And he walks the first batter of the game. Okay, fine. Uh, Fra Frazier had a good at bat there. Now you're with the stretch, and generally you do see that. You see a, a ball of them first pitch. Why? Because they haven't pitched out the stretch yet, and that's something they have to learn. Uh, you have to get calibrated with that. When guys throw a good first pitch on the first batter uh, that has reached in a game, that's impressive. I always, always kind of love that. Uh, nice. Way to throw. That's kind of free real estate, even though that is the dead zone. If that's 0-2, that's terrible, but at 1-0 when they're likely going after a fastball, that's, uh, that's a good one. All right, throwing a change of their 85. He doesn't throw like his right-handers. He's throwing against lefties, right? Uh, that's not a bad offering. At 1-1, you got to throw it a little bit closer to the plate, though. Uh, there is 89. 
So that's a little different, right? That's more of the cutter. And that actually, I think, could turn into something if that's more embraced against right-handers. But seeing the 82, I think, wasn't really the right approach in that situation. You have to essentially get them prepped for 89 to get more of the whiffs on 82. Does that make sense? Okay, that's a good pitch, though. Up and in. 2-1, probably looking for a fastball, feeling like, oh, no, this is meaty enough for me to swing at. And what do you know? You don't know what to do with it, and you get an out. That's good. Three for five in the first game. Single, double, bad. Tried to get free real estate, couldn't get it. Okay, you tugged it too much. Good pitch there. Going, missing away with that curveball and coming back in um, at 94 with a sinker is really, really nice. I like that. Okay, you got the swing there at 80. Uh, at an 8 mile per hour curveball, this is close to the plate. It feels like it's good. Uh, Robert Jr. is really selling out more so for that heater and felt like he could follow that. Didn't realize the movement would be this aggressive. Fair enough. So now at 1 2, you see that kind of swing. You kind of want to throw it again. Um, I would probably do a cutter at 89 because I feel like uh, rubber is is trying to decide if it's going to be heat or not. And I feel like the 89 mile per hour pitch will be a little bit better and more tempting. 82, right? Okay, so he does go does go after. That's a really close one. He's really going after. You do you keep going, yeah. I I honestly would just keep selling out for it. Oh, that's a nice pitch. After a lot of them. 95 up and in like that does read more like 97 because you haven't seen the heat for a little bit. Perfect spot, too. He needs to swing on and commit. Love that. That's a great pitch from Vasquez. But I do want to mention, to earn that strikeout, he has to go through a lot, right? It needs to be, like, perfect spot, and uh, he has to earn it, you know? He can't just kind of, like, cruise into strikeouts like some of the other guys we've watched. That's a hanger. This is a... Eloy Jimenez, honestly, as a, as a batter, um, I'm really respecting what Eloy Jimenez is doing these days because we saw a home run against Michael King the other day. That was a fastball down the middle. He had one pitch. He took advantage of it. It was not a good fastball from King, but he sold out on something thinking it would be 0-0. And in this situation, normally, it's a man on first, two outs. And generally, when you have a man on against a big batter, I say this all the time. What you're going to see is a breaking ball. You're not going to get a fastball as a big power guy with a man on base. It's just not what the first pitch usually is. And huge props for Eloy for, for thinking breaking ball, seeing a hanger, staying back, and doing damage against it. I think a lot of big power guys should be doing this more often, especially with a man on base. And props to Eloy for taking another good swing. So there's the changeup against lefties, right? Hasn't been able to throw a first strike yet. Hey, that's the cutter at 91. It looks like he's only really using that against lefties up and in. I do wonder if that can be a right-handed weapon, too. But he made a good pitcher at 1-0. I mean, it's not like the best, but it's tempting enough for Makata to swing at those. You know? Normally, you really don't see that with the cutter because... Because it's staying up and then it's falling back down. And if it's staying up like that, I mean, that means he would be in him on a fastball in the same spot, too. Um, but because it still didn't get into the zone, you would think, like, it's easier to resist. Makes sense? Okay. I didn't really explain that well. We're going to go one more inning here. And that's that's the good stuff. Man, oh, I love seeing O-swing, high O-swing on sinkers, right? This is a free strike or an out every time. Every time. You execute this. This is off the plate. Off the plate. You don't want to throw your sinkers inside the zone. You don't want them land inside the zone. You want them land just off the plate because every same-handed batter will do exactly that. And they'll give you a free strike. It's so good. Do it again. Ah. That's a, that's a mistake. This is why, like, this is the difference between those seeing O swing one and not. Oh, is this foul? Oh, man. That, you Jake Berg is good at the plate, too. Like that, that, you missed that one, Jake Burgess. What do you get now? You get a breaking ball, I would assume. Burger assumed it too, and then all of a sudden found the fastball coming. Goes, oh no, is that a strike? Realizes not, is able to hold up. Props to Burger. So now you got to think it's a secondary. No. Oh, and he gets the sinker, four seamer inside. Okay. So that's kind of cool because that's a play of four seamer and sinker inside, which I really dig. You want to hit. Um, 
I want to review this really quickly. This is a kind of combination that I think a lot of fastball pitchers do effectively, and Randy Vasquez gets his outs with combinations like these. This is the first pitch against Jake Berger. It is a sinker inside that ends off the plate. This is a strike more times than not. It is such a good skill to have. I love this from Randy Vasquez. You get to strike one. Now at 1-2, after throwing a lot of fastballs, Randy Vasquez throws this, which is a four-seamer inside. And why is this getting an out? Because it's not the sinker and it lands inside the plate. If you can throw your four-seamer along the inside edge and then throw your sinker off of that inside and go back and forth and sequence them, you will get these outs that Va Vasquez just got. Jake Berger is hitting the ball well this year. And he just got out a tough hitter doing some basic sequencing, but also really good fastball command. It's the little things like that that can allow Vasquez to go five innings shutout like he did against the White Sox. There it is. That's all I need to do for this entire video. The question really is, can he do that with consistency, right? I mean, look, he almost lost that at bat with Jake Berger uh, throwing that bad fastball at 0-1. But those are the kind of things where you're like, how does this guy get this? Is out. It's that stuff. Oh, come on. Don't lose him. Just throw a good cutter inside. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that is a good cutter inside. It's kind of interesting. That's a 2-1. Uh, this, this pitch is good. Don't get me wrong. If this pitch is inside and in the zone, I think he grounds it out to first. Especially in a 2-1 count. Uh, and more so in a 2-1 count because... Uh, he's going to be aggressive on a fastball, like a 2-0, 2-1. Um, I mean, I dig it. Don't get me wrong. I'm never upset at you getting a strike. It's those little, ah, this is what I meant. I mean, this is a four-seamer, but right, it's that location. It feels like Makata would have been beat on it, right? A great location. Like, props to Vasquez here. He's locating. Now, here's, there was a sweeper, I believe. Yeah, the sweeper was not 88. It was 80. Woo! You know, he's been doing a lot of inside stuff with fastballs, but there, all of a sudden you land that one, and it's just like, oh, dang. Like, instead of thinking, like, inside, it's heat, away, it's slow, just changed. All of a sudden, bam, now, like, when I see that cutter away or something, is it going to be the fastball? Is it going to be the, the four-seamer? That's so good. Oh. Oh, and he, huh. So that's cool. Um... I, I, this, I know it sounds weird, but like you throw that four-seamer away, like down and away like that, and through this game, as we've been showing with Vasquez, he's been going fastballs inside and then the slow stuff away. So throwing that four-seamer away, saying, because it's kind of saying like, okay, cool, that's going to be either the four-seamer or it's going to be the, the cutter, but this is actually the two-seamer, and he actually tries to start this off the plate to come back over, which is just like not in the mindset, right? And he goes for it, he doesn't get it. I, you got to go back inside now. I see. Okay, so this might honestly be a situation where the Yankees are like, just don't throw anything inside to this guy. Like, this is this is Gonzalez. He does well inside on pitches. I think that's actually what's going on at this point. Um, I'm generally... <laughs> and then they get him, what do you know, with an inside guy. Um, something I think I differ with... Uh, I've had conversations with organizations, with pitching coordinators, with a lot of people... And about their approaches and what they do in preparation. I've talked to the players about like what they get before a game and how they work out a game plan. And I am actually very broad, and I kind of say keep it simple, stupid. And what I mean by that is I think what gets lost a lot is if a pitcher is just good at his command, if he can have a game plan himself about like just generalized rules, he will that's all you need to do. And there are a lot of times that, that pitchers get lost in what the batter is bad at and say, well, this guy isn't an inside fastball guy. So he's in a way once we're just going to throw away fastballs to him. And I'm glad that Randy Vasquez had the skill set to do it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, this really isn't about Vasquez, but just in general, I think guys try to overextend what their ability is to try and beat the batter at what he's bad at instead of trying to beat the batter with what the pitcher is good at. And I'm, I'm the, of the philosophy of, philosophy of just do your best thing as best as you can, as opposed to trying to do more because the batter is good at what you're good at, right? Uh, that's just how I am, um, especially against a guy like Gonzalez. I mean, I don't know if that's what they did. I'm just, I'm completely 
I. Uh, that's a good fastball inside. Well, you know, you get an out. Like, I love this. That's me completely assuming because all of a sudden it was a different approach for a certain guy. And I feel like it's Gonzalez. Like, you don't need to... You overextend for, like, Freddie Freeman. You know? For Ronald Acuna. Like, okay. Like, you have this, but, like, he's just so good at that kind of thing. You have to try and do something else to get him out. Fine. But, like, not like the 8 hitter. You know what I mean? Yeah, because this is clearly the thing. You throw fastballs inside, and that's good. You know, honestly, like, one of the better comps you can think I can think of right now for Randy Vasquez is, like, uh, like what Adrian Hauser does almost. I mean, I guess because Vasquez has better secondaries than Adrian Hauser, but, yeah, it's the same kind of thing. Cal Quantrill, you know? These guys pound heaters inside. Um, This is probably going to be the last inning because I think it's just going to be more of the same here. See, that's a mistake. And he gave it a drive. Is he going to – oh, he's out. Okay. But that, that's a mistake pitch. And you can see he's on the fastball. You don't give a fastball now. Oh, was that? Oh, I would have loved to see a, 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 a righty and righty change up there. Because, like, you see he's, like, he's going after the heater. Now, that was a little bit late and pushed the right field on the middle pitch. So, maybe, yeah, you can go inside of that. I'm not necessarily disagreeing because the Vasquez has um, uh, been able to hit that all day and all that kind of thing. But you can see, like, he's fighting here, these fastballs, and the changeup is just a different look that might mess him up. Like, he's not expecting it. No. Ah. Uh, like, you can see that he can... Come on, throw it once. He's on that. Okay, he finally, he finally does execute, and you can hear the broken bat. I mean, sure, Vasquez did execute the pitch that he wanted to execute, right? So, fine. Um, like, and he got the out. So good, good for him. I still feel like the change would have been it. Ooh, that was, that was interesting. That's a four seamer technically in 92, but I feel like that was more like a middling, like cut fastball. Difference between a cutter and a cut fastball is like you have a four seamer that has some ride to it, while a cutter is more distinctive, also on a little bit of drop. Oh. <laughs> I think he got away with that. I don't think that's what he's trying to do. Down and he's trying to go up, I think. But, I mean, that's a fortunate, like, oh, thank, thank the Lord. Nah, what are you doing, Sheets? Cut her inside, gets them. Cut her inside or change up away. Yeah, that's fine. I, I, you know, this is one of those starts that, like, Vasquez's fastball is not getting hit well by the, by the White Sox. And also, he's not really, like, making mistakes down the middle of the plate. Like, you can see this. He's really living around the edges effectively. I mean, there are some mistakes, and the White Sox aren't good enough to take advantage of them, you know? But this generally works. It's just, like, that's great. And there, once again, you can see, oh, look at the fist pump. Look at this. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I keep jumping between it. Look at the fist pump. Oh, no, he got hit. He got hit. I'm sorry. I thought it was like, yes, he got the out. No, 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 that was, that was the back of, uh, I'm sorry. But, yeah, one pitch, one out on, like, a fast one side. Like, oh. That's the kind of stuff. I said to go and keep doing the innings, but like these are, this is just so easy to breeze through, you know? Like he's executing these good heaters, and the White Sox aren't doing anything with it. Oh, there's the, yes, yes, good. Throw the cutter to righties. Tuck it until the fourth inning. I guess they want to like, oh, next time through the lineup, we'll introduce this. All right, fine. First time through, you throw this. Second time, you throw that. Okay, fine. Yes. Uh, Eloy does not expect this. This is why he fouls it off. And he's going to heater on it, and then he's like, "Oh no, it's that!" Like he was really believing that was a fastball. Used to go out to dinner. That's why he get. That's a, such a good pitch, and that's a surprise. Now that's in his head. Oh, I, you go back up and in. Yeah, yeah, that's on his mind now. Yeah, yeah. If he executed that, that's strike three. What do we got? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Man, Eloy wants that back. I feel like Eloy was almost on that one. This is like the most dangerous batter of the entire lineup, so. You know, that's funny. That's another hanger to to uh, to Eloy, and I think he wasn't timed for it. He's staying in a little bit. Um, he, I mean, he hit that one hard, but, like, he just didn't get the lift on it. He doesn't, didn't quite get it. But that's that's a front door that he was staying in. Oh man, that's a gift, Mancada. You're not gonna get a better one. Serves into left field. McKinney is there. 
Nice. Nice. Yes. There's the changeup, right? I mean, like, that's that's the thing that my coach used to yell at uh, the players about. Was you don't swing at this. You know? You don't swing at this. But then you swing at this. I mean, that's a great pitch from, from Vasquez. But that's, that's like the mentality of hitters, right? You know, you don't swing at the first one where you get the pitch and then you're right and then you're swinging at the pitch that you shouldn't be swinging at. Good sequencing. Also, just Mankata, yeah, yeah, chose wrong. <laughs> the good hitter is able to choose better. Um, but it's good to see that change up executed the right way from Vasquez because we didn't really see that otherwise. Um, there's another inning. I don't really feel like I need to see it. You guys know who Vasquez is at this point. Really good command here. This can work. Now, this was against the White Sox. The White Sox leaned into the strengths of Vasquez, right? Like, they let him cook. Uh, I don't know if he will otherwise. And you're going to see, like, a low bat up or something on this one. I think he deserved a lot of these outs. Uh, I thought a lot of these pitches were, you know, grounders that should be not should be returning outs. So, good stuff from Vasquez. It's just a question of... Is he going to go get away with as many pitches as he is? Is he going to have that cutter command as good as he did? This is better than Brito, I think, though. This is like Brito, but a little bit better. Better four-seamer and, and sinker command than what I've seen from Brito. So, uh, and the cutter, too, against lefties was really nice. Um, sweeper needs a little work. But, uh, but anyway, really fun to see this from Vasquez. Much better understanding, I, I imagine, all of you should have now. But that is it. So thank you so much for uh, for watching these. I mean, go back to the backlog. If you're like, oh, man, Randy Vasquez, I'm understanding him now. Go watch everyone else. It's the same idea. But that is it. All right. My name is Nick Pollock, and may your babs be low and your strikeouts high.